Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is an After Effects and Premiere Pro mask comparison. All right, uh, first up, if you don't see masks in Premiere Pro, time to upgrade. If you see some of the masks, but not the free, free Bezier drawing uh, pen tool, time to upgrade. Those were added. Um, After Effects has had masks forever. They're incredibly powerful, great for rotoscoping and drawing shapes. Illustrator added masks and, and they I use them so much more. I don't go to After Effects for a lot of what I do unless it requires that level of complexity. That being said, there are some significant differences that, between the two. Uh, I still prefer the After Effects mask in the way that it draws. If you come from Illustrator, um, even the path tool in Photoshop and drawing shapes in, in InDesign, you'll feel very much at home with the, uh, the pen tool and After Effects. Premiere Pro, pretty darn close. Good enough for me for most everything. Let's have a look. All right. So I want to mask out this vehicle here. I picked something with a lot of different blurring all the way around it. Um, and over on the left hand side, when you twirl down opacity and you see these tools, if you don't see them, it's time to update. Right now there is no mask available. When I click, a mask is added. So nothing is drawn yet. And you'll notice that when I move into this area, I have a pen tool. There's no arrow tool over here on the left hand side that you're using. Every other keyboard shortcut and the tool for the hand, all of those are missing and unavailable when you have this pen tool. To help me draw this, I'm going to zoom in and I'm gonna make this part of the screen larger. You can do that by clicking here into the panel group and choosing maximize panel group or tap the tilde key, which is the little squiggle key above the tab key on the North American keyboard. Now, even though I'm closer here, I still want to zoom in a little bit more. And I don't have the hand tool, so I have to move these very hard to see scroll bars right there. So I'm going to start by clicking and dragging. And quite frankly, I would probably be in here more. So I'm, I'm not really talking. So normally I would zoom in if this was After Effects, I'd zoom in a little bit more. Uh, but Let's just do it at this point. I have to make some considerations in here and how far I'm going to go out to the blur and how far in. Of course, I can change that later. And you'll see right there, we've got less blur. Of course, I can change the mask feather after the fact. So I'm going to go pretty quick around here. And basically, I'm either clicking once or clicking and dragging under the wheel and you can go back after you've drawn a path fix a path and you'll notice that when I'm clicking and dragging it is drawing a blue path for me to see what I'm drawing now now that that's one area that I find I do a lot in Premiere Pro and, and I never do that in After Effects I find the sensitivity of this little rotating guy way too tight. Normally you'd have to go all the way out here in After Effects to see it, but in Premiere Pro you get a few pixels away from drawing a point and you see it. Okay. So again, I could be a little bit more accurate, but I'm just going to finish this up so we have the path. So instantly when you finish the path, you see the mask. You'll also see the default for feathering. And if we look over here, the mask feather is 10 pixels. And I can change that to more, or I can change that to less. If you come over here and look, we definitely need more over here and we need less over there. There's no way to get around this in Premiere Pro. There's one single value for all of the feathering equally around the outside. I'll show you where there's differs inside After Effects. You have this, but we've got more control. A couple of other things I want to show you working with points. I'm just going to turn this down for now. 
You'll notice that when I'm inside, it turns to a hand and I can move this around. And when I'm outside, past the little rotate tool, I can select a point or I can select points. When I want to select a single point, I can move over top of that point, select the point, and I can also manipulate the handles and all of those things. What I can't do is I can't select that and hit the delete key. It won't delete. I need to hold control or command on the Mac, click and then delete. I can't select multiple points and delete all of them. I'll only delete the one I'm on. So those are a, a few other differences uh, between the two applications. Now, if I wanted to, I could right click on this and I could choose replace with an After Effects composition. This would enable Dynamic Link. It will take this video clip and the Premiere Pro mask, load it into After Effects and convert this into an After Effects mask. So this is a good one to keep in the back of your head if while you were drawing this mask, you realize, oh my goodness, the, the front end of that needs more blur than the top and the sides because when things are motion blurring, they're gonna motion blur more this way as they drive in that direction than they are that way. Okay, so instead of having to scrap the whole thing and go to After Effects, you can send it to After Effects and then tweak it on top of it. I've already got it open in After Effects and I'm gonna show you what goes on in there. All right, so let's jump into After Effects and see what the same thing looks like. Okay, so here is the clip, I've dropped it in and all you have to do uh, is take a clip and drag it over top of this comp and it will create a new composition that size. Of course, sending it to After Effects through Dynamic Link will get will take care of that right away. So when I have this selected and I come up to grab my pen tool and you'll notice there's the pen tool, the add, subtract, convert, and this is what we'll get into in a second. Um, you can get each one of those tools or you can just use them um, simply by using modifier keys. Now watch this. I'll tap that same maximize key and now I'm using my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Plus, I'm going to tap and hold the space bar and get a hand and move in even further. Sweet mama, I'm in 800%. I could go further. I'm at 1600% if I wanted to. Having to change the zoom value manually and the scroll bars on both sides on Premiere Pro is a little bit of a pain. Here, it's so much easier. And I love the brilliance of the After Effects engineers. Years ago, they implemented the idea that the space bar normally plays the video like any other uh, editing application. Tap the space bar, play. Tap and hold, temporarily give me the hand. Why? So I can pan around and zoom in to do this. If you've done any kind of rotoscoping work or Photoshop masking work, you'll know that you're constantly zooming in, zooming out, panning around, zooming in, zooming out, always. So this makes it much easier. Oops, make sure you don't, uh, make sure you hold the, the, uh, <laughs> the space bar. Okay, so here I am doing very much the same thing. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the color of that mask. If you twirl down the masks and click on this little swatch right here, you can pick any color you want. So let's go and grab a similar color that we have uh, in Premiere Pro. So as I start to draw this around, I'm gonna make the same considerations about where this falls between these pixels because there's a, they're incredibly blurred. Now I'll zoom out a little bit because I want to see the slope of this and I want to be efficient in how I'm drawing these masks. You might not be able to tell, but I tell you, I sure feel a difference the way the pen tool works in After Effects. There's something really nice about this. Okay. So again, I don't want to bore you with this, so I'll try to be as quick as possible. Uh, don't mark me on the accuracy of my mask as I'm going around here very quickly. And we've got black shadow on the black blurred tire, so I really have to guess at this point of where that is showing up.
All right. So very much the same thing. The default is to not have any feathering. So that is just a hard edge. Um, if we look at the, the mask settings down here, you'll see there's the mask feather, very much the same. I can click and I can feather the whole thing. But what I was showing you before is if we go back into here and choose the mask feather tool, check this out. Remember the front of that vehicle is blurred much, much more. You'll notice a little plus showing up when I mouse over the path that I drew, the mask. Now when I drag this out, it's dragging a little variable width feather. So this is a variable width. How do I know it's variable? Because I'm going to click in another spot and I'm going to drag that down. So you can see different blur values depending on where you are. And there's no limit to how many of these you have. If you remember over top of, of the uh, this roof rack, it was really, really tight. And over here, it was a little bit more. So we can drag that roof rack back in there and have that kind of a feather. That makes a huge difference. Now, maybe I'm pushing it a little bit uh, too much over there. I'm seeing more of that background. But I think you get the idea, and that's at 200%. So look at that. We've got nice soft edges around here, tighten up in, in other areas. The other things that I was pointing out in Premiere Pro that you can't do easily, I've just selected this one point and I can tap the delete key. So it's easier to select a bunch of points and delete. In fact, it's very much, like I said, like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, that those vector paths are easier to manipulate. A couple of other things that I think are really important, and this is one area where um, I get a lot of, of uh, questions about invert and what people think invert is. There's an invert in After Effects and there's an invert inside uh, Premiere Pro. They work perfect with one mask. Draw a mask, invert it, and now everything out other than the mask is hidden. That's what you use this for. You don't use it for combining and intersecting shapes. It's a mess. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say that I wanted to remove this window from this mask. Well, I'll go back up and grab my path tool, the pen tool, and I will come into the window and I'll draw around this window. And what you'll notice right away is that After Effects is going to draw a new mask for me. And it shows up down here. Now these are the little things you don't have in Premiere Pro. The ability to change this from none to add, subtract, intersect, light, and dark and difference. Well, what do I want to do with the window? I want to subtract that one. Boom, I subtract it. Look at that. I've taken that one thing. And if we go to our transparency, there's a hole inside that window. Oh, how I wish Premiere Pro had that little freaking option in it. Because a lot of people will say, oh, let me draw another shape and I'll, gee, I don't know, invert it. Hmm, okay, well, let's uh, go back and try that, shall we? So we're back in Premiere Pro, let's go into 200%. Let's move up to that same area and let's select this, go grab our pen tool. Boom, we click on, wait a minute. The whole other mask is gone now. Well, let me draw this just maybe that'll fix it. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll just draw a quick mask in here. And what happened? Well, let me invert the next one. Oh no, let me invert the first one. Let me invert that one. Let me invert this, let me invert, let me, uh, 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 uh. bottom line is you're not gonna get the same capability I just showed you in After Effects. You won't, you're not gonna, ain't gonna happen. If you wanna do that kind of very complex compositing of multiple shapes, you're gonna have to use multiple layers, multiple pieces, nested con or nested sequences, forget about it. It's that much easier inside uh, After Effects because it has that little drop down mode menu of uh, uh, add, subtract and, and everything else. All right, the one last thing I wanna show you is what's happening in memory. If you copy and paste a mask inside Premiere Pro, which you can do very easily, uh, you can copy and paste it, but it only understands Premiere Pro. What's in the clipboard is proprietary to Premiere Pro. In After Effects, not so much. I'll show you what I mean. 
Let's select the mask and copy the mask. And believe it or not, let's go to Illustrator and paste. And we've just pasted inside Illustrator. We took the shape and we could take this Illustrator shape and go back to, to uh, After Effects. We can even do this after it comes into Illustrator and I copy it. So I'm in Illustrator, copy it, and I go to a text editor, I can paste it in there. Holy smokes, who would do this? Well, somebody that needs that vector information because that's really what the path data is. What After Effects took advantage of was the fact that years ago, Adobe created Adobe Illustrator on the clipboard. They created PostScript vector data that could be inside the clipboard. That's how you're able to paste stuff from Illustrator into InDesign. You're, you've got vector data that is an open format, not proprietary to wallets being in there. So think about that um, because sometimes maybe you've drawn a really complex mask and then somebody says to you, boy, I, I would love that mask to do this in our print campaign or in a vector graphic, in an HTML animation, in whatever application. And your first thought might be, don't make me go draw that whole, wait a minute. Copy, paste, and I'll have my money, please. Yes, I drew a completely new shape for you, and I can uh, bill for that job. All right, this is a little bit long, but I wanted to show you the value of both of these applications. Like I said at the beginning, since the paths have been uh, added in, in Premiere Pro, I hardly ever go to After Effects, only when I have very complex composite. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please take a moment and subscribe. Um, if you want to take your support for, uh, for Video Revealed up a notch, please join us on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month would make all the difference. And to all the people that are supporting us, thank you, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.